بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the Voice of Islam, the Friday special podcast. Alhamdulillah, today I have Sheikh Hatim with me today, and we are now in the last 10 nights of Ramadan and on Friday, inshallah, in a few more days before we have Eid. So, to this program, we're going to dedicate about reflecting about Ramadan this year, Ramadan in the year of 1445 Hijrah, and how we all feel about this month and how things have gone. Sheikh Hatim, how are you? <coughs> Alhamdulillah, how are you, bro, Dr. Firdaus? I hope Alhamdulillah. you're doing well. Alhamdulillah, we're getting uh, yeah. getting a bit exhausted. I, I guess towards the more towards the end of Ramadan, I don't know about how you how you feeling, Shah. I I do get exhausted over <laughs> time. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, ya Rabbil Alamin. And fasting is not easy. Allah, it's not easy. It's not easy, especially uh, in New Zealand. Now we are more coming into summer, so the next few years, you uh, know, Subhanallah, we'll be fasting longer and longer, longer days. <laughs> <laughs> might have to fly to see you. Easy for you. Might have to fly to see you, especially in Ramadan in Oman, so we can fast a bit shorter there. <laughs> you're, you're most welcome. You're most welcome anytime. Most so, welcome Sheikh, anytime. we have got no uh, specific topic today, but we are going to be reflecting about how Ramadan has been for us. And of course, we cannot forget, we cannot ignore with what happened to our brothers and sisters in Palestine, especially in Gaza at the moment. And I think this Ramadan has been a a difficult Ramadan maybe for all of us. It, it definitely it's for me. It's for me. It's very difficult. Yes. Difficult in the sense that we've seen what happened in Palestine on a regular basis. But uh, this time around, it's a different level. It's another level. And perhaps social media play a big factor as well, where we get to see first-hand yes. account about what's happened in, in Gaza. Um, so, Shay, I'll start with you first with your reflection, inshallah, and then I'll, obviously I'll, I'll jump in as well. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ferdows, uh, for the introduction, and we would like to congratulate all the Muslims in the Muslim Ummah for passing the three weeks of Ramadan and uh, making it to the last week of Ramadan بإذن الله تعالى. And as you all know, brothers and sisters, that uh, we are in Ramadan, but we have uh, many of our loved ones who had not gotten the opportunity to be with us this year. They have uh, passed away. They are uh, uh, in a better place, hopefully, inshallah. So they cannot reverse anything. But we can, we can still do or make a difference in this Ramadan because we are still alive and Allah has given us the privilege to fast and pray and supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no doubt that this Ramadan is very different than the Ramadan that was last year uh, and mainly because of the genocide that is going on with our brothers and sisters in Palestine, it is very hard to relax. It is very hard to consume food, uh, to enjoy in family gatherings while our brothers and sisters are being slaughtered um, every single day. The news is just horrific. I think uh, not only the people of Palestine are being steadfast, but even us, we need to express the highest level of patience towards this brutal enemy because the news uh, has come recently that more than 200 people were slaughtered and uh, women have been raped. So I think uh, the enemy has pushed our buttons to the limit. Um, it's very difficult, uh, Dr. Ferdows, uh, knowing that, uh, you know, some, some Muslims who are, who are calling themselves open-minded, they say, why do you supplicate and curse, you know, the enemy? And it's just a natural feeling for someone who is, who is brutally killing your, your brothers and sisters 
you can't have feelings towards them you can't not pray against them because of what they are doing to our brothers and sisters i mean kids are asked to walk naked women are stripped out of their clothes you know men and and women and old people are shot by snipers and we are expected to be tolerant we expected to be forgiving we expected to you know not to raise our hands to the skies uh, and ask the master of the day of judgment to punish those who inflicted this pain to our people i don't think it's possible it's very difficult it's very difficult there are a few of us who got tired they stopped boycotting they stopped you know watching the news they stopped even uh praying for the people in palestine they stopped mentioning the the people in palestine they just ba- went back to their daily routine and i i just don't understand how how can you go back to your daily routine and you know come up with the phrase that life goes on uh you know because you got tired if you think you got tired what about the people in palestine it's been 6 months in this condition anyways the last uh, week of ramadan is the end of the race it is the cream of the cake it is a showcase of your stamina and steadfastness and patience and how you are determined to be strong and tough and finish to the end um i know people get occupied in the last week of ramadan shopping and of course this is l- lack of planning uh, you should have done your shopping before ramadan Uh, and not uh, waste the last precious day days of ramadan in in shopping and being in the market some people uh, miss a tarawih some people miss their prayers just to be in the market you know uh, for eid um again going back to the month of the quran uh, how is your personal relationship with the quran what have you done lately with the quran did you give yourself time to understand even one verse and try and implement it in your life so that you may ref- you may reflect uh, what a sayyida aisha radiyallahu anha said about the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam kana khuluquhu alquran his character was the quran so don't you want to be you know like the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam let us uh, not also forget those who are not considerate to our brothers and sisters in palestine so since the beginning of the month of ramadan they have been taking pictures and videos of the fancy iftar meals that they're having and posting on social media while you know i saw videos of our brothers and sisters in palestine eating sand they they've been eating uh you know uh grass that is meant for cattle they've been eating grain that is mixed with sand they have reached to that level some kids have died out of dehydration and hunger and and you are taking pictures of your fancy food and bragging about it on social media I think this is not something that a muslim should do because if we don't think of the pain of our brothers and sisters then we we deprive ourselves from the humanity that is inside us we deprive ourselves from the feeling of brotherhood mm. towards those who share with us the same faith faith so it's it's just very tough uh, i would say dr ferdos this is the toughest ramadan 
that I went through. And I never imagined one day that uh, um, I'm going to be miserable in Ramadan and not be happy. Uh, it's just exhausting. Allahu alam. Zakallah khairan, Sheikh. I think um, I think we all share the same feeling here, and in the sense that you know, um, it's not easy this year, Ramadan. Um, yes, we are far away from Gaza, from Palestine, uh, but I think social media play a big role here. It plays a huge role in, before you get to see what they want to show you, but now we get to see first-hand account of everything that's happened and like you say in the same thing to me for me as well when you get to see um you know i think i saw uh, one of the video a boy named yusuf he was wandering around uh, bare feet um, and there's no families father and mother were killed and he only have a younger sister you know and an uncle's looking after him so when you see videos like this, when you see what's happening, I mean, you see those who starve as well at the same time. And you see how some of the kids are, one of the videos that clearly, you know, stuck in my mind was, I think you know how the bag of flour spill and it's spill and mixed yes. with the sand. And one of these boy, he go and grab it, you know, whatever flour that he can see, he grab it with his hands and put it in his pocket. And they were putting, they tried to grab as much as he can. And he's mixed with sand, but he grabbed it and put it in his pocket so that he can bring it home for his mom to cook. And when, when you look at this video, you see how desperate it is now and how desperate and how the world is accepting this, what's happening in Gaza to be okay. And how, you know, you know subhanAllah, it's difficult. You know, we're not, you know, we are not in the position to, uh, uh, to do anything apart from uh, making dua and asking Allah. And please, brothers and sisters, do not belittle that efforts of dua. Dua is the most powerful weapon uh, that we Muslims have. And of course, if there are any other ways that you can change, so please do so. Please do so. Uh, you know, and I, I keep saying this again and again, you know, I'm repeating myself. Um, Imam Mashafi'i mentioned that, you know, the dua at the time of the hajjud is like an arrow that never misses its target. So if you really, really seriously hurt and uh, find painful to see what happened with our brothers and sisters in Palestine, we know that there are so many things difficult at the moment. We are not in that position. We are not the leaders. Uh, but for what we can do, we make dua. We donate as much as we can. Yes, some donation may not be able to reach, but at least we try our best. We try our best and donate to those organizations, the charity that actually are um, able to do certain things as much as we can. May not be able to do that. We know it's stuck, but at one point, inshallah, you know, this will end. And then and our brothers and sisters need to rebuild their life. They're not just the food, it's the immediate needs, right? The food and the shelters is an immediate need. But they, they have to start from scratch, brothers and sisters. They got to go and find, they don't have a home to live. And they are, you can see what the ruins of the universities, the schools, everything have to be start from scratch again. It's a lot of work for us to, to, to help our brothers and sisters over there. And subhanAllah, you know, we, we never thought this will happen. And um, funny thing, Aisha Hatim, I'll share something actually. I share something with, oh. I spoke to one of my uh, friends actually who are not Muslim. And she was touched by what happened in Gaza and she said it was very tough for her you know and like I said to everybody what happened in Palestine in Gaza is not a Muslim issue it's a humanity issue everyone yes. is affected by this so this friend of mine who are not a Muslim and then she mentioned to me how much she's affected by this and she said it's amazing how the world is accepting this and she was reflecting upon what happened at the time of um uh, you know the world war ii you know what happened with the uh, uh, uh you know the, uh, the, the the killings of the jews uh what you call it the uh, um the holocaust know, the holocaust yeah how can the world were accepting it and she said you know when she reflected upon it she said it's the same thing it's the same thing at that time that the whole european country just kind of ignore what happened to at the time of holocaust and we see the same thing happen again in gaza there's so many many times 
and then, and I get to read a little bit about what happened in um, uh, in Ireland in Ireland with regard to their famine, yes. right, the famine that's happening, and the way how the British Empire were treating the Irish, and that's why the Ireland uh, Ireland always close to the Gaza, to, close to Palestine because they remember their history, they remember what happened to them at that time. And again, the same and South thing. Africans as well. South Africa and the same thing. At that time in South Africa, when the apartheid was happening, majority of the world just ignore it or don't care about it. Why? Because it's far away from you. And the same thing is happening. So this is what she said. She said she found it difficult to accept, you know, that we are allowing this thing to happen in, in Palestine, in Gaza at the moment. And she also said something very important. She said, if it wasn't for the social media, she didn't know about these things. Because the way how, what she's Canada. been exposed, you know, the way th the thing that she's been informed, it's not what we, what she she learned now. So she didn't really know what happened at that time, and she didn't get taught about this at school. So you know, I think Sheikh, um, as much as uh, you know, we 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 we, you know, we find we find it terrible to see what happened in Palestine. But Subhanallah, Allah, I think uh, this is the thing. You know, before any victory comes, there will be a struggle. There will be difficult. There'll be hardships. So I ask Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, to grant them victory. I mean, I mean, it, I mean. It, it's difficult. And like you say, Sheikh, uh, whenever I do my iftar, even the dates doesn't taste sweet. So it's, uh, it's, uh, subhanAllah, it's difficult. Uh, it's not as fun as we, you know, in the last few Ramadan, you know, yes, we know, we see what's happening in, in, uh, in Baitul Maqdis, for example, we see what happened at that time last year. Remember, uh, remember this? What happened, uh, Sheikh, uh, in in Baitul Maqdis last yes. year? Yes, yes. You know yes. where you know all the um, during Taraweh, the all, attacks, yeah, you know, the attacks. Uh, the, the 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 soldiers came and you know handcuffed all of them and put them you know for hours until you know early morning. And uh, yes. and uh, yes, we see that. Yes, we got hurt, but this time around is a different level. Well, it's a different level, and and because we get to see firsthand and everyone is affected by this and every muslim should feel it. yes i'm not in saying that we should not enjoy our life if allah gave us blessing please do take so but remember 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 that uh, we are like one ummah yeah all of us one ummah if part of our body is hurt you know we need to feel it and then we are feeling this uh, what happened in gaza and i'm sure Shah Hatim, it's uh, much more difficult for you you are closer to them than us here in New Zealand, uh, but we we felt the same share. Wallahi, we felt the same. We felt the same, and we keep talking about this. And every winter prayer, we keep asking Allah to grant victory, to grant ease, to grant uh, them patience to to go through this hardship. Allah Dr. Ferdows, you know uh, that uh, the the enemy is hurting us by brutally assaulting our brothers and sisters. Uh, it hurts us a lot, but you know what hurts more is when your own people are betraying you. So there are some Muslims now who are working hard to go against the boycott. There are Muslims now who are calling upon that this is no longer our problem. It's a Palestinian problem problem and we shouldn't bother ourselves. There are Muslims now who are blaming the resistance and saying it is our fault. We shouldn't have done uh, the October 7. There are Muslims now who speak, you know, in a very harsh way against our brothers and sisters in Palestine and uh, it's just too bad to hear this. It hurts when it comes from within yourself, from your own people. If we as Muslims don't understand the, the reality of the, the conflict in Palestine, who's going to understand it? How, 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 how dare we accuse the Palestinians as the ones at fault i just don't understand these muslims and uh, life goes on there was a concert somewhere and i tweeted about it saying that 
it's not the time to have concerts. And you can see the amount of attack that I got from Muslims telling me that, uh, you know, we shouldn't stop our life, we should continue. And this is not a, our problem anymore. And uh, don't interfere with our concert. You know, we're tired, we want to easing up and uh, relax with our children and and so many of these comments and it's just disappointing honestly it's disappointing and i think allah intentionally made this incident happen so that the lines are distinguished now who's on this side and who's on this side you know all of the masks are dropped now and those who are with the cause and are patient till the end until Palestine is free uh, on this side and on the other side are the hypocrites and the ones who never believed in the first place Allahu Alam um, I'm not sure Sheikh. I mean uh, from from my perspective what I see is perhaps maybe you see this more in the Middle East what you are mentioning just now Yes. Uh, but we go places like uh, Malaysia, for example. I can see that the um, the level of support is, if anything, getting stronger. Alhamdulillah. And I do also see, being someone who live in the West, I see that the in general, people who are not Muslim are actually become more aware and supportive of this. You can see yes. protests after protests, the numbers are growing, and the people who are speaking up are getting bigger and bigger in numbers. You, you get tired, Shah, but you know, I think majority is better. But like you say, there are people who are Muslim, who Allah has wanted to reveal them, you know, that what, who they are, actually, you know. And and you see this at the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well, in the Battle of Khanda, in the Battle of Badr. You see, you see this over and over again. You see the same thing is happening. The thing is, we, we, do, we need to learn from the lessons. We need to learn from the histories. And so that we're not going to be part of the same thing that's happened in the past. We're going to be documented in the same way. Um, but Alhamdulillah, Shaykh, I can I can assure you that in in the West country like New Zealand, for example, the awareness has become huge, as I said before, and uh, more and more people who are not Muslim. And like I said, you don't have to be a Muslim to feel sorry to see what happened in Gaza. You don't have to be. You don't have to. To even understand anything else, how can you accept women and children being killed? How can you accept to see kids running after flowers? You know, there was one video that Subhanallah that even you know this young boy was screaming. You know how they're not allowed to drop uh, the, to bring the uh, aid through um, the border, so the aids are yes. being dropped by the uh, with the airplanes, and one of these boy was angry and crying and he said because the the, the the food that was dropped rather than dropped on the land actually went into the sea and um, and he was crying he said look they are humiliating us one they don't allow us the food to come and now when they drop the food they drop it in the sea of you know of course because of the wind and things like that you know but you can see how how much frustration that they have yes, yes. you know and, and and how do you what how, how can they fix this I mean, anyone need to know that these kids now who are growing up, who are growing up in this situation, they will not forget. In 20 years from now, what do they will choose to do if the same situation will happen? They will be a young man. They will do things that they, you know, to stand for their rights, to, to ask for their rights. And the same thing, you know, we talk about this in our videos in the past, right? The one that uh, and, uh, happened on the 7th of October, the people were involved. They are the young men who are we know as we know in the 90s in the early 2000s they were not throwing rocks against the um uh, the tank the tanks they were throwing yes. rocks against the tanks now when the 20 30 what do you expect what would they will do the resistance will continue right and uh and subhanallah yes. you know if you really want peace you have to treat people like a human being simple as that if you want peace you want security. You want people to treat you better. You gotta look treat people, other people better. That's 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 the case. I'll I'll share with you one of the one of the comments that I I, I saw, which is ironic. 
a Muslim, unfortunately, he says, uh, why are we holding on to the stone? And the, the reason why saying stone, it means Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Human lives are far more precious than the stone. So just let go of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. And he, he, he forgot that this is a aqidah issue. This is a creed that we have to protect Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. It belongs to the Muslims. No matter how much sacrifices are there, these will be murders with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you can't convince us today that you know what? Just let go of Masjid Al-Aqsa. Give it to them. What sort of, you know, betrayal is that? How can you let go of the first Qibla of the Muslims? How can you let go easily? Do you think Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi did not sacrifice people to open Jerusalem? Do you think Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab did not sacrifice people to open Jerusalem? Why are we so weak? Why are we giving up this easily? There is no struggle in the universe without bloodshed. You look at any struggle. Uh, just look at uh, Algeria. It is called the country of one million murders. And they say there is even more than one million. All of these people who lost their lives, who are murders, for the end result, for the cause, to free Algeria and make it independent, you know, from the invaders. And the Palestinians now, they are doing the same thing. They will not give up. They will not leave. They will not stop resisting until the last, you know, inch of Palestine is freed. And if you think that you want to take the easy way out and just give them Jerusalem, you know what will happen? They will take Jerusalem. They will take Jordan. They will take Lebanon. They will take Egypt. They will take Syria. And, and it will come to all of us until the Gulf. It will not stop. It's like a cancer. So we are asked to resist. We are asked to, to stand for what is ours. And we will not give up. No matter how many people are killed from our side, we'll just carry on. This is a struggle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked us to do until the end of time, the, the day of judgment. So stop being a coward and stop giving up, you know, the most sacred thing in your life, your faith. Are we, are we, doing, are we both going on a rant today, sure? <laughs> um, we do it out of love, out of love, out of frustration. Um, I don't want to see goodness in, in everything. And then we you know, like Sheikh, we will stand against anyone, if any, any other places that happens, the same way. The same way, uh, but subhanAllah, it's very terrible what happened in Gaza at the moment. Very, very, very difficult. Difficult for all of us. Um, the thing is, Sheikh, we mentioned about Salahuddin. I, um, I took the other day opportunity to read uh, a little bit about Salahuddin and the time of the conquest of uh, Jerusalem. And uh, it's also amazing, Sheikh, what we see at that time when, Jeru when Salahuddin were focusing on getting Bayt al-Maqdis, getting Jerusalem back. Um, there were Muslims leaders at that time that we, know, we don't even know yes. their names. They will collude and go against Salahuddin with, al -Yubi. right? With the so, enemy. Yeah, the same thing. The same yeah. stories. The same stories happen. But I, I remind history repeats itself. History repeating itself, right? And I remind the brothers and sisters as well. Salahuddin, yes, he's a great leader. Yes, he's a great army general. However, Salahuddin is successful because he's also a Quran reciter. He's also a muhaddithin, right? So he also he also understand all this. He understand all these things. He learned Quran. He understand Quran. He can recite Quran beautifully, and he know the hadith as well. So basically, in the, the 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 recipe for success for all of us is to follow the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Only then Allah will send 
the army with you. How? In any way and shape and form, right? So Allah will come. If the whole world is against you, but if, if, if you follow what Allah asks you to do, that's a template for success in anything, in anything and everything. So it doesn't matter whatever you do, whatever you have, however strong your economy or your money or your, your, your weapons and whatnot. But if you are on the side with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah the one that owns the entire earth, the entire universe and the, the heavens and the sky, if you are on this side, you will be successful. However, brothers and sisters, the success will only come when Allah wants it to come. The success will not come straight away. Remember, for 13 years, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam struggled in Mecca. It's not easy. And we know the story of Musa alayhi salam. Musa was promised Jerusalem. right? His people, the people of Israel were promised Jerusalem. But they did not, they did not get it at the time of Musa alayhi salam. They, come, they only get it at the time of Yusha bin Nun. Right, so Musa at the time Musa was upset about it because he was hoping that he will have it in his time, but he didn't get it, and he didn't get it. And you know what, Sheikh? Yes. There were the scholars were mentioned that at that time of you know the by the time of Yusha bin Nun when they conquered Jerusalem, right? At that time, the, the people of the Banu Israel at that time, that none of them were among those who used to worship the golden calf. So you know what? Allah get rid of everyone you know, who is committing this grave sin. They do not deserve to be successful. So only the next generation, they get the success. So that's something for us to remember. Yeah. Something for us to be re to reflect upon. Right? So we, we it, it's tough for us, Sheikh. I mean, it's tough for us. It's tough. It's very difficult. Allah, it's difficult. It's difficult to see what's happening in, in Gaza at the moment. Very difficult. But we have to be mindful that Allah has his own plan. And his plan is the one that will be the most important plan of all plans. What, all what we have to do, focus on what we need to do, speak up whatever we can, do whatever we can along the line of the teaching of Sunnah, uh, the, the, the teaching of Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam along that line. As long as you stick on that line, That's you will be successful. That's what matters. And we know that those brothers and sisters in Gaza, the over 30,000 who's been killed, we know them guarantee Jannah. So we are peace. We are at peace when we remember that. It's, it, we are not at peace to see how the kids are suffering, but we do what we can do. And this is the best time as well, brothers and sisters. If you're watching this still in the month of Ramadan, if you have the opportunity, opportunity to donate, whatever you can, apart from the dua. And we know that donate to the, 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 trusted, the trustworthy organization that you know. Do that, whatever little amount that you have. And I know, Shah, it's also been a tough time for us as well. I don't know about in Oman. Uh, New Zealand now also in recession. Um, you know, the economy is not doing quite well for us. Um, a lot of people lost their jobs. And, uh, you know, businesses, you know, had to bankrupt. So it's, it's tough. All of us, we, we, we're facing difficulty, whatever we are, wherever we are, in our way and shape and form. Uh, but whatever you can for our brothers and sisters in Gaza, please do that. And the least that you can do is yeah, to make dua. Make dua. Make dua to Allah. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, you know, uh, Brother Firdaus, Allah gave us the opportunity of uh, Laylatul Qadr. Yes. The last 10 days, it's a golden opportunity for us uh, to gather our strength and be together and use the most powerful weapon that we have, which is supplication. And um, especially in Tahajjud, the night prayer, um, we can do wonders when we unite. And that's why um, the Zionists wanted to end this war before Ramadan, because they fear Ramadan, uh, the, the Muslims are united, they are more spiritual, they are more close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this will mean victory. So we have to, you know, uh, make sure that we implement what they think. So if they're scared of Ramadan, let, let them be terrified. Let them let us show them that we are united, that we will pray day and night uh, for the victory of Palestine. And we will get closer to Allah. 
we will open a new page with Allah so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us you know victory I uh, I I have a difficulty and I'm struggling that uh, the Eid will be coming soon yes and the day, the Eid is the day of joy and I just don't understand how it's going to be how it's going to work out this year so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength to implement this ibadah you know the being in joy and happiness on the day of Eid is a is an act of worship yes and it's an act of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hmm. but I remind myself and I remind my brothers and sisters do not be extravagant do not overdo it and do not take pictures again and and uh, share it on social media we want to preserve the dignity of our brothers and sisters in Palestine we want to make it easy for them they are going through a rough time and we are comfortable in our homes with our families so let us not overdo it let us do the, the minimum this year for the sake of our brothers and sisters I know it's difficult I know it's something that we got used to uh, but you know let, let us try I, I'm, I'm not depriving anybody I'm not saying that don't be happy yes but be very moderate in in mm. what you do mm. and at every step you know don't forget your brothers in dua yeah, mm. just uh, pray for them just pray for them yeah. Allah and good reminder I mean we're not supposed to not we have to celebrate Eid um, our children's uh, especially if you are in the West like myself here uh, we have to make the most of it so that the kids also enjoy have that joy of uh, the ibadah that we do yes. uh, fasting and, and Ramadan so alhamdulillah you know do what we, we can but be, be be cautious be mindful of of what others has gone through uh, in fact, actually, Shai, talking about the food, you know, some scholars actually uh, discourage this from uh, sharing because there are people who are suffering. It doesn't have to be just our brothers and sisters in Palestine. There are people who don't have this means of, of food. And, you know, yes. looking at the food, the pictures of your joy may actually invite an evil eye as well. So, subhanAllah, so just be mindful of that, brothers and sisters. So, what's Eid looking like in Oman, <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Eid a little bit. Um, I'll be having my Eid in Malaysia, inshallah. Uh, I'm looking inshallah. forward to that, inshallah ta'ala. And uh, I'm sure Eid in Oman is also huge. And uh, uh, what's, what's, your, what's your program for Eid normally? Do you have a long holiday in Oman? We have uh, like four days or five days, depending on when the sighting of the moon is and when Eid falls. Mm -hmm. So if it falls, for example, on Sunday, then you're lucky. <laughs> you you get uh, Friday, Saturday is a weekend and then Sunday yes. is Eid. And then so you get Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And because there's only one day left, which is Thursday before the weekend, normally the government said, hey, just continue. <laughs> Yeah, so so you get a very long uh, from one weekend to the other. Alhamdulillah. But uh, this year, I think it's going to fall on Tuesday. Tuesday Wednesday, so or Wednesday, no yeah. Wednesday, I think Wednesday or Tuesday. Well, yeah, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. Yes. So normally we are given uh, one day before Eid. Mm -hmm. We're given mm -hmm. a holiday, mm -hmm. and then three days. So if it's gonna fall on Tuesday, so we're gonna be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then Sunday we're back to work. And if it's Wednesday, so it's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Last year, I think, uh, Eid fell on Friday. <laughs> so so uh, we got Thursday off. So it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday, we were back to work. Mm -hmm. That's good. Alhamdulillah. That's good. Um, so when did you start fasting in Oman? Fasting in Oman? we started tuesday. on tuesday yes tuesday okay so it will be wednesday yeah. will be wednesday before sighting the moon is on tuesday i think 
uh, yeah, I think for you. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, New Zealand. Inshallah. Yes. Alhamdulillah. That's good. Anyway, we'll talk. Alhamdulillah. You know, we'll talk about Eid. Uh, the, the, you know, like you say, we have to celebrate. You know, the, uh, the, you know, but be mindful, be moderate, and uh, and still remember our brothers and sisters in Palestine, and in Gaza, and keep making du'a. Um, and I think that's that's from me basically, Shah. I mean, I, I think I feel like today, you know, our program today is all about. I'm being honest about how I feel about the whole thing. Um, very, very honest the food you know and everything that we do this year it's very difficult and that's one of the reasons why i haven't done much online program this month uh subhanallah just uh, you know but you know with regards to seeing online share you know like uh, even pictures and even then i have tried to reduce because it, it creates a sense of um sadness sometimes and it's it's a normal yeah. response. So uh, at times I do avoid it from from looking at those videos, uh, and you know every now and then I do look at it at the, some of the children and videos because it's very sad. Allah, it's very very sad, and, it's and it gives everyone. you despair. Yes, yes, uh, because uh, you, you can't do anything about it. Mm. I wish if we can do more, uh, but uh, you you just your hands are shackled. Mm. You can't do anything. You're just sitting at home and watching the news yes uh, which is very painful yes yeah. anyways alhamdulillah rabbil alamin and alhamdulillah. Uh, we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hold our hearts on the faith yes. and uh, to always make us concerned about our brothers and sisters around the world wherever they are whatever they're going through alhamdulillah alhamdulillah Remember the verse, wa makaru wa makar Allah, wa Allahu khairu al makirin. You know, um, we plan, they plan. Allah's plan is the one that's what's what matters, and it's the one that's gonna be, that's gonna happen, inshallah. So, jazakallah yes. khairan, brothers and sisters. Uh, Sheikh, I mean, uh, alhamdulillah, I think the uh, uh, this is our program before the uh, uh, end of Ramadan. Inshallah, we'll do some more program in Shawwal. and maybe I'll do it from Malaysia. Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. Inshallah. And, inshallah. Uh, Maybe you can come and visit me in Malaysia for, for Eid. You know, you're most welcome, Yasha. And I'm sure our Malaysian brothers would like to meet you as well, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. So have a safe journey uh, we'll back uh, to Malaysia and uh, see you soon, inshallah. Inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.